I've been racing since I was 11 years old, 33 now. And my main role is as team manager and making sure everything runs moderately smoothly. Yeah, kind of didn't know if I'd ever do a World Cup again. That's way beyond any of our expectations. Really fortuitously happened that I've got this opportunity to focus on racing and do it again. And I couldn't be happier that I get to do this. <laughs> it's very cool. So historically, Ben was an absolute hero at national races. He would turn up to a Scottish race and smoke all of the World Cup racers, but then we'd get to a World Cup and we'd struggle every time. That was just Ben Cathro. Ben was on a World Cup team a long time ago. It's like my, it is my home race really, so I'm always looking to do really well because I've got so much support. And he had to stop racing World Cups due to financial reasons. So he took a huge gap from racing World Cups and made videos. Day two of Cathro Vision. I've come to one of the lower pieces of track and it is super steep. Oh. What's this all about, mate? Trust me, all right? Oh. Rough. The whole time through, all of his racing career, especially in the early days, he definitely wanted to win, of course. When he had to step away from World Cup racing, that must have been pretty devastating because I don't think he had like another plan. And so through making videos and through his plan B, he's managed to come full circle and now he's back in a position where he could realize the dream that he had maybe given up on before. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Ben Cather and we're here on the first practice day of the World Cup here in Leo Gang, the people on track. I'm feeling a bit sick, to be honest, but not in the good way. I've got a bit <coughs> we'll try. We're gonna try. You can but try. So we've got a super steep roll in into a little scrub jump. Whoa. Oh. Nice. Will he case it? Oh, he does case it! What an idiot! <laughs> but no, are you not riding? Uh, I did one run, feel really weak. So I'm going to wait for time yeah, training and just do like three runs at the end. Oh, here we go. So I'm too ill. Uh, yeah, I have no strength. So I managed managed to make it work for uh, this morning, but now the holes are a lot bigger. Uh, I hit a hole and went collapsed into a bars and was like, that was bizarre. So I stopped before each section to have a wee rest and I'm like, right, I should have my strength back now. And I drop in, hit the first hole, and just, <laughs> just collapsed into my bars again. So yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not well enough at the minute. Unfortunately. Yeah, I know, I need to get some drugs on for tomorrow and that'll be why my leg hurts. <laughs> Whoops. <sighs> so, so I caught a cold off my son and uh, as part of all the planning prior to the World Cup, I find, you know, most days I'm sat up till like 11 midnight just writing emails and filling out forms and stuff like that. And I'd had a few nights where I'd just been up really late and I'd have to get up with the kids in the morning. And I think I was pretty drained, caught the cold. My wife and kid were fine. <laughs> I was in bed. to create a game plan where I tried to get in a mindset that I was just as relaxed as possible and I just tried to control my pace and use as little energy as possible. Like don't pedal where I don't need to, just sit down and breathe where I could. 
and I did a full run, which I was genuinely really pleased with, but it was slow, really slow. So I was like 14 seconds off of qualifying. <laughs> That was a really hard race for me, really hard. Talking with people I hadn't seen in a while, presenting videos and stuff, I'd just been talking a lot all day and I had a sore throat in that evening. Like my tonsils and my throat were just super swollen up. So I actually decided to purposefully not speak as much. What's that noise? So I was actually feeling really good in practice. Uh, I was getting a lot of feedback off the hill that I was riding really well. I was feeling quite good to be honest. I think people see Ben as uh, kind of like a goofy guy, he's kind of low key, but he is so unbelievably competitive and he works so hard. So it's been cool seeing him kind of like on the side of the track, I'll, I'm switching the tables now where I'll be like, Catherine, yeah, how is it doing some interviews? And I think that is so cool to be able to, like I said, put your whole self into something again. Ben is up there technically in comparison to the rest of the field. I genuinely believe that. When you separate a section and you say, ride this one section, Ben would absolutely be up there. If, if the track was 30 seconds long, Ben could be in the top 10. I've got no doubt about that. His way of finessing a single section when he really can think about it is amazing. And you know, then there's fitness and then the string in a whole lap together like that is just a different game entirely. Hands on, stay away. Off the field, off the field, stay saying to myself I'm going too slow the whole way down it just felt slow and I felt tired and I'm, my arms were like caving in holes and stuff and I got to the bottom and I was just like oh god damn it there's no way I'm going to qualify and I turned around and I got into seventh only like a second back I was like well that's interesting <laughs> um it's going to be tight I've uh, isolated three people that could knock me out. One of them's on track right now. He's on a similar pace. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven people left. <laughs> ah, yeah, and ben Benny's got me. Yeah, it was a funny one. Um, it kind of made me realize that I really want to make the time to put the effort in to do, to do better. I feel like this year has been all focused on making this happen and not focused on making me fast on a bike. So um, I really want to rearrange my priorities and I, I feel like I've only really realized it this weekend.
summer. After my illness and Leo Gang, kind of didn't feel right. And we did some blood tests and stuff, and I was showing inflammatory markers, and then I was really fatigued, and then I got really sore joints, and I had to wear wrist braces for the following races. And uh, I'm pretty sure I had undiagnosed long COVID, and it made things really difficult. I would have felt that you want to try and get up there, but this might be fine. I just thought maybe that might become like a little bit of a catch. This bit's sick if you start from there. Come in fresh again. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Classic thing where people track say they're like, yo, you were meant through that bit. So yeah, you didn't see me having like a mild asthma attack around the next corner. <laughs> difficult track of the year and I didn't even know if I could get down it. So to get to the point that I put together a clean full race run, even though it wasn't as fast as I wanted, I was really happy to just end the year not injured and a clean run. Honestly, even though it wasn't a great result, I was happy. I was happy how it all ended. None of what's happened has been planned. <laughs> it's like I joked about it when I did the trackside videos. It's like, oh, did you see a gap in the market? Some niche that you could you could fill? I was like, no, it, I just sort of did it because I was bored and then realized it was good. So I did more of it and then wanted to do racing again because I like it. I was like, well, I like that, I'll do that. And then started making videos about it and people liked it and it's just, it's like, <laughs> there's nothing, is it? Yeah, I feel like there's been a series of fortuitous events that just has plunked me where I am right now. And it's quite a cool way to live, I guess, in that, you don't have, I don't know, you live in the moment, I guess, and you can kind of enjoy things in the moment. One of them is helping out Leona, like young French girl, it was something we didn't know was gonna happen. And 
yeah, it was just like an opportunity that just sort of popped up and could have easily just swatted it away. But we just was like, yep, yeah, I think we'll have this opportunity. There's a trench. Who's that? Is that better? Let's finish the shot. Euh, ce qui est cool, c'est que le Pink Bike Racing, euh, c'est vraiment un team qui est complètement différent des autres parce qu'ils aident vraiment les gens qui en ont vraiment besoin et qui ont vraiment envie de performer. Et, euh, et voilà, c'est ce, ce qui manque et c'est ce qu'il faut. So we met Leona in Fort William, the World Cup. And she was on a different team then and She was chatting with Peter, our mechanic, who speaks French, and he heard from her that she was just having some difficulties with the team she was in. They were having some disagreements. And he told her, how about you just message Ben? Knowing full well, I'd be like, right, there's a rider in need. Let's give them stuff. <laughs> God damn it, Peter. And then we came up with this really cool idea. Henry suggested it, that what we would do was, well, Jackson was injured, Jackson Connolly, our junior rider, Why don't we sub in a different rider while he's injured? So there's two World Cups in Lenza Heidi and Andorra. It was really last minute because we only had a week and a half to the World Cup. But Peter built her a bike, gave her a bike. She managed to ride it for two days at a French Cup. And then we arrived here at the World Cup in Lenza Heide. <laughs> I think my favorite meeting of this year is so cool to ride with her because yeah, it's not like rival, it's like good friend. Guess what? We did the big job. Oh, yeah, how was it? Good. It was good. It's a bit messy. <laughs> perfect. Like a scarecrow. Yeah, it was perfect. Coming. I can take the good results, so mm -hmm. I yeah. think tomorrow no stress and yeah, exactly. it's just more stressful right. just to get yeah. to race. Yeah, Once it's you're racing. it's like a test. Yeah. Yeah, this weekend I think it's my favorite race of my life because uh, the staff and the bike and the team, all people, it's so cool. Mais, du coup, ça permet que genre euh, on se sente bien et que il a pas de stress ou quoi que ce soit. Genre juste, euh, ben, on sait que quoi qu'on fasse, ben, on n'est pas jugé et on a juste à, à rouler quoi. Puis voilà. Pete could have easily just had an easy two weeks, but he's mechanicing for Leona and obviously the whole team is just helping out. And I think it really shows like the sort of people that we are and like what the team's here for. We don't have any <laughs> I think when you don't have the support 
you're you've always got this thing over your head that there is there's a time limit so you can't just keep trying forever because it's a lot it costs a lot of money to race world cups with the travel the bikes the expenses and different people can fund that for different amounts of time and Leona said to us at the start of this year that she doesn't think she'll be able to afford to race the following year without a team and having that looming over you that you you need to perform to get on a team otherwise you can't do it it's it's a lot of pressure Leona is somebody who I perceive to be incredibly passionate about riding. Um, I think she's probably somebody that is fueled by a barely clad emotion. It's, it's an emotional pursuit as much as anything. It's not just about turning up and getting results. She really wants this and it feels like, from what she's told me, she sacrificed a lot of things to make this happen. Woo! How are you feeling? A uh, little bit sad because it's not my best run and yeah, I don't have a good feeling on my bike but... How has it been with the team? Oh, with the team? Uh, that's so, so cool. I'm so happy and um, I'm a little bit emotive <laughs> for this. Yeah, I'm so sad to... Uh, this is... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm so so lucky to um, helping with this team. <laughs> Best team manager, thanks Ben for all. And yeah, this free race was the best moment of my life. Really, it's take your bike riding with uh, with pleasure and. Just concentration of this and not with uh, oh my number where is my number oh my mechanic nothing just ride and smile and that's so cool thank you so much <laughs> Thibaut, Jackson, Amy, Leona were so fortunate to be able to have Ben Cathro as their mentor and he's so good at giving advice and he's so warm, uh, such a warm presence in the pits. Uh, so accommodating for all of your insecurities as well, that you can come up with him with some ridiculous problem or you can be completely just thinking of stuff irrationally and he can calm people down and, and set them on the right path. All of your insecurities are just amplified 10 times because you're just insecure all the time. You're always scared, like you're trying to ride this track, you know? So it's about switching over into that fun mindset. And Ben really brings that fun mindset wherever he goes. 
So it allows people to start enjoying the situation and that leads to good performance. So the riders have been really lucky this year to, to have had that experience and I'm sure they'll, they'll know that as well. Ben, say something really significant. This is going to be the section that wins the race. No, it's not, I, don't, I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> Jackson, say something really significant. This is very significant. Oh, I got one. I got one. This week, I'm racing instead of managing. Like I'm, I'm racing. Race your boy. This Amy? week, Ben's going to race. That was my one. <laughs> Just reworded it. Let me have it. Amy, say something significant. Amy, shut up. <laughs> was that significant? That tame, was tame drama. This is tame, gonna be pretty key. Tame drama. Say something significant. What are you thinking, bro? Maybe less. No, that's not. That's fighting. <laughs> <laughs>